Okay, this is a HSP Brontosaurus 94111 Top Pro. Um, it's pretty much the same as Red Cat Volcano, Hemoto, Exceed, RC. They're all pretty much the same model. A lot of you have made comments in the past a um, couple months with me being on Facebook um, as far as issues that you've had, and I have come up with quite a few different ways of solving those issues. So here are some of my solutions that I have come up with over many many test runs and figuring out what is good and what isn't good, what works, what doesn't work. So um, one of the first things I did to try to alleviate stress on the suspension was I moved the position of my shocks. Um, this also changes the progression progressiveness rate of the shocks allows for a little bit smoother ride a little bit more control over rough terrain they do um, have five adjustment holes on the aluminum shock towers so I go as far in as I can to change the progressiveness and it allows for a real smooth ride as you can see but also when you change where they are located rather than having them be down and over as far as you can it gives you a lot of height a lot of ground clearance but you have no chassis slap. You, can, you, you need that chassis slap. That, that, that vehicle needs to bottom out all the way without having any binding. So what I have come up with, right here on the outside of the axle shaft, you can see where it goes into the, into the um, stub axle. And usually when you turn all the way, the shaft slides too far back and forth and allows for this to pop out or bind. So what I've done is I've put O-rings down in the diff cups on, on this side on the diff cup where it goes into the differential and then on this side where it goes into the stub axle I put O-rings that keeps this axle shaft centered and I've also changed my geometry of my suspension and how I've done that is I take this upper control arm and I move it from the top hole how it comes factory to the bottom hole and on the inside which is a little bit difficult to see um, See if I can pop this shock off of here. On the inside, I have moved to the very top hole. So bottom hole on the outside, top hole on the inside on the shock tower. And what that does, let me pop this shock back on. Sorry about the video being a little shaky, guys. Um, what this does is if you look at the, the way the tires sit, you want them to stay parallel and travel in a parallel line. When they're from the factory, you push down on them and they tip in, which causes the axles to push into the differential cup and to push into the stub shaft. And what that does is it binds the axle. It actually binds the axle like this. So while it's rotating, it's bound. There's too much pressure and it won't allow it to actually spin freely in, in the axle stub cup or the diff cup side. Most generally it's gonna break on this end over here because that's where the binding is happening. So when you change your progressiveness of your shocks, allow for a little lower ride, it centers that axle shaft up and keeps it from being on such a large angle. So it's nice and straight, or well, as close to straight as you can have it and still have a little bit of ground clearance. When you change your, your control arm position, it allows the wheel to stay parallel or the steering knuckle, so to speak, to stay parallel when traveling up and down. See, it doesn't move in and out anymore. It's nice and straight all the way around. That is what I have done. And then I've also switched brands of axle shafts. I'm using axle shafts off of an HPI bullet. They are three and a half inch axle shafts. They have the exact same diameter ball on the end. The shaft itself is a half millimeter bigger around, so it's a little bit thicker, a little bit more robust. It's a, it's a harder steel, and they use hardened steel pins so they don't break. The other thing that I have done is complete aluminum upgrade on this particular truck. T-bone basher bumpers, front and rear, all aluminum control arms, steering knuckles. Everything has been upgraded to aluminum except for the steering linkage and the control arms because I found that the factory plastic ones are tighter. They don't have as much slop side to side. That's, that's what I have come up with so far. I figured that the, the tighter the suspension is and the steering is, 
the better it's going to handle. And I tried the aluminum ones, they, they slop around too much. If there was a better brand out there of aluminum, you know, to have a nice solid piece here, I would probably upgrade them. But on the other hand, the, the plastic is a little more flexible, which helps. So, all that being said, those are the upgrades. Those are the things that I have done. I um, fabricated this off of a Volcano S30 Nitro. And I, I ground them down, changed the hole locations a little bit so that the rear has a little bit of uh, support back here so that the shock tower is not flexing back and forth. I've got one for the front. I haven't done the modification on that yet. The other thing that I have done, let me grab my parts box here so I can explain to you what part I'm talking about because a lot of people don't know what part I'm talking about. Okay, so I also have aluminum differential cases. I haven't put those in yet because you have to reverse the um, differential in the rear and the front. If not, it'll bind. You have to replace both aluminum housings at the same time. You can't just do the front or the rear because these are slotted for the differential to sit. Well, from the factory, when you put these in, the differential sits over here on this side to make the rotation of the wheels the correct direction. When you buy the aftermarket aluminum ones, it's on the other side, it's backwards. This is the bottom where it mounts in here. So it's actually on the right side of the truck now where originally it's on the left side. So if you put just the aluminum front diff in or just the aluminum rear diff in, it'll be opposite. So your wheels are gonna wanna turn forward and backward or vice versa. Okay, that being said, this is your standard HSP, Red Cat Racing, Komodo Exceed Differential. These little diff cups here are a soft, thin steel. They're not really that high a quality. So what you do is you take this differential apart. I'll pop these four screws out. I have one that's already disassembled. Let me grab that for you so I can explain to you what to do here. Let me get this truck out of the way. And mind you, after I've done these upgrades, I've been running 3-cell LiPo without any problems. This is how many differentials and stuff I have gone through. A whole pile of them. Because they break. Because they weren't built quite right. So, this piece is the diff cup. It slides into this part of the differential. The internal part of the differential. When you pull these gears off, you're going to have a case that's similar to this right here. Inside of this case, there's O-rings and such that you have to make sure that you put back in place. But you pop this apart to get this gear off right here that slides over this differential cup. There's a small snap ring. And you can see the radius in the end of this here where there's a snap ring. Pop the snap ring off, slide this out of the differential. Take this piece right here and hold it with a very long pair of pliers. Preferably as close to the end as you can get it so you can get the entire thing hot. Get it red hot with a torch. Not hot enough to where it's going to melt. Using a propane torch is just fine. Get it red hot with a torch and dip it in some transmission fluid or something like that, oil. Um, transmission fluid is better because it dissipates heat at a little slower rate, so it allows for the steel to harden at a little slower rate, which allows the molecules inside of the steel to slow down properly. You do that twice. You get it red hot twice, and you quench it in oil until it's it's co cooled down to the temperature of the oil, and you'll tell be, you'll be able to tell because it won't be any bubbles. It'll stop steaming. It'll it'll be cool to the touch. Then you heat it up again for a third time for about 15, 20 seconds. Not enough to get it red. And you want to keep it away from the flame the third time around. Just enough to get it to where the molecules are starting to move again. Drop it in the oil. Pick it back up out of the oil. Set it on a cookie sheet. Stick it in your oven for two hours at 400 degrees. And that tempers the steel. Um, instead of just having it case hardened, it helps it harden the steel all the way through. It helps stabilize the molecule so that the steel is no longer flexible. Um, but it also stabilizes it so it's not too brittle. When you harden it or case harden it with a torch and oil quenching it, it's just the outside basically that gets hard and it makes a brittle interior of the steel. Um, when you temper it in the oven at 400 degrees for two hours, it allows all of that hardened steel to kind of relax. Helps it relax so that it won't break. So it won't be brittle, but it won't be too soft. Then you take it out of the oven, you let it air dry for about half hour or so, Put your differential all back together. Put your differential back in your truck. If you're using the plastic original one, make sure you put it in the same location. That keeps these from wearing out. 
I know it's difficult to see on my truck because I have the basher bumpers and everything else on there. But those differentials that I'm using, I have been running. It's really hard to see, and I'm sorry for that. I have been running on three cell lipo, and you cannot hardly tell that there's any wear on them whatsoever. Um, they're holding up really well now that I've hardened them. This is what happens when they're not hardened. You get a really, really bad wear spot in them, and that also creates binding on the axle shaft. So if your differentials are worn where the pin slides through, you can see where I had to grind it to get it out. If they're worn like that, and they got a, a spot where the pin is sitting, you're gonna have binding problems. You have to make sure that this is nice and straight all the way across, nice and flat for that pin to slide against. Also what I do before I stuff my O-ring down in that little hole, as I put a very, very small amount of lithium grease in there. And it helps the O-ring stay lubricated so that the shaft can tip side to side inside of there without binding up. And when you have the lithium grease in the center of that O-ring, it lubricates it all the time. And it allows for a nice smooth action of that while it's spinning around with no binding and no issues whatsoever. I've been running this, like I said, on three cell for I would say approximately, I don't know, three or four months now on the rear differential was the first one I tried it on. And you can kind of see the differential cup. It's really difficult, but I have no wear whatsoever in there. It's still perfect. I guess you can't really see it too well. It's right down in here. It's nice and straight. And I have been beaten on this truck. And I mean beaten on it. I also have a little larger tires and they bite real well. Even on two cell, you're not going to have any breakage. You're not going to have any problems. Um, as long as you set your geometry upright, set your suspension upright, lower your ground height just a little bit, and make sure you got that chassis slap. If you don't have that chassis slap with no binding, you're going to have problems with the suspension. Um, if you guys have any other questions or any other thing that you, you think that I didn't cover with this whole axle shaft problem, please, please tell me in the comments. I'll make another video. Um, if you would like me to make another video with this disassembled so I can get better pictures of everything, ask me. I will, uh, the next time I do an upgrade, which is probably going to be these differentials here, I can go ahead and get the GoPro out, I'll set it up, and I will do a full video of the repair. Taking everything apart, tearing it down, cleaning it, properly looping this up with some 15K diff oil. These trucks like 15K. I tried 50K, I tried 500K, it's too thick. Um, they just spin out of control, and they're really, really hard to steer if you get too thick of fluid in the diffs because front and rear are locked together. Um, as far as hardening these, I also hardened the diff cups where the center shaft goes in place. And this one you can probably see. I've run this from the factory. That's a factory cup. I pulled it all apart and I hardened it. I ordered it right from them, and that's the only amount of wear I've got running 3-cell since I bought the truck almost a year ago. That was the first part I hardened because I broke two of these center shafts because this got all wallered out inside and it bound up on me. So, any other questions, any other concerns, you guys have any problems, please feel free, contact me. Hit me up on Facebook. I'll get back with you guys as soon as I can if you have any, any questions concerning what I've reviewed today and what I've gone over. Um, be, be my guest. Give me all the questions you got. I'll do my best to give you guys all the information I've come up with. Um, if you would like part numbers or websites on where I've gotten some of this stuff, let me know. I can post them in the comments later. I'll have to dig up the information on my accounts online to see exactly where I bought what. Um, other than that, it's pretty cut and dry. Make sure when you tear everything apart, you get all your screws tight inside of those differentials. If you don't get these little screws tight, it'll shear them off and it'll eat the guts out of this. I've done that once. Kind of pissed me off. So anyways, if you guys have any questions, concern, get back with me. If you need any other information, let me know. Um, the next video I will be doing, I'm going to be showing you my shredder upgrades. And we're going to be doing a speed run later today, hopefully, if the weather holds up. So, anyways, get back with me. Um, got lots of RC stuff. Been doing this stuff for a long time. So, hopefully my advice to you guys will help you guys keep your parts on your car and not have to spend quite as much money to keep them going. Thanks for watching my video. And good luck to you.